Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor. Here are the top stories we're following for you now at noon. Arkansas is still mourning after the death of state Supreme Court Justice Robin Wynn. A closer look at what happens to his seat in four minutes. Plus a tragic end to the search for a missing sub and the five people on board. A closer look as rescue efforts become recovery efforts. And tourism to Europe is reaching near pandemic levels. A little later, how countries are preparing amid new restrictions. But first, it is Friday. Scott Covert is here to join us. Scott, a lot of people ready for the weekend, like a me. A lot <laughs> of people ready for the weekend, but I'm afraid, I'll speak for myself, I'm not ready for the heat that we're all going to be feeling going into the weekend. It's warm outside right now. I'm tracking temperatures in those upper 80s. In fact, Texarkana has already joined the 90s club. It's 89 in Little Rock, 87 currently in Batesville and Searcy, slightly better at 86 in Russellville and Clinton. The rest of the day, I think we'll see those temperatures warming up to about 93 in the capital city. And we'll enjoy a partly sunny sky. Well, yeah, it's warmer than it was yesterday, and it will be the case today. Uh, it's not as humid. It's slightly less less humid. You'll still feel it, but that certainly helps a little bit. Our winds have transitioned out of the south. We'll continue to see those 5 to 10 miles per hour. Those southerly winds drawing in more Gulf moisture, warmer temperatures, and that's why this weekend it's going to be sultry. Scattered chance of showers and storms both tomorrow and Sunday. Not a washout, but about a 30% chance of hit and miss showers and storms. Heat index values though, that's the big story. Sunday dangerously hot, 105 to 110. And then later next week, it could get even warmer. I've got your full forecast coming right up. Yeah, and with those temperatures rising, North Little Rock announced today that they will open a cooling center this Sunday. It will be open from 1 to 5 p.m. at the North Little Rock Community Center. Pets are allowed to be at the center and vending machines are also available, but they encourage you to bring your own food, drink and entertainment. Well, time is running out for Arkansans impacted by the March 31st tornado to apply for federal help. FEMA will permanently close its three remaining disaster assistance centers in Little Rock, North Little Rock and Wynn next Wednesday. Until then, the centers are open every day but Sunday. For a list of where those centers are and when they're open, you can head to THV11.com. And that's not the only deadline you need to know. In Little Rock, curbside debris pickup from the tornado will end on Sunday. Workers will continue to collect debris today and tomorrow before the final sweep on Sunday. We're learning an Arkansas Sheriff's Office is the target of a cyber attack by hackers who were able to gain access of a vital computer server. Work is now underway to identify the damage. Now it happened at the Baxter County Sheriff's Office in Northern Arkansas. The sheriff says a federal agency notified them that a group of hackers overseas got into a computer that contains public records and documents. While the sheriff doesn't believe the hackers obtained any private files, he says it is possible that they stole personal information on his employees. Well, guns for gift cards, that is the goal of a gun buyback program that's coming up tomorrow in Little Rock. This will be the fourth year for the event at St. Mark Baptist Church, and this is video from last year's event. Once again, once again it's being sponsored by the Little Rock Alumni Chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity. They work throughout the year with community partners to raise money to get guns off the streets. And here's what you need to know. It's happening tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at St. Mark Baptist Church. That's at 12th and Fair Park. And any working firearm will be exchanged for a Visa gift card. Today, Hot Springs holds a dedication ceremony for a new safe haven baby box. It will be at the city's central fire station. If you're unfamiliar, parents who are unable to care for their children can anonymously surrender their babies to the box at, as a last resort option. When a baby is placed in the box, an alarm goes off in the fire station. A safe haven official says this has been a record year for babies placed in boxes. And since the first one was built in Arkansas a few years back, they have been five surrenders. Now a developing story that we first told you about at noon yesterday. Many people continue to grieve the loss of Arkansas Supreme Court Justice Robin Wynn. Today he died Wednesday at the age of 70. 
THV 11's Ashley Godwin spoke to the mayor of Justice Wynn's hometown, Fordyce, to find out just how much he will be missed. Me and Robin always was uh, real close. Fordyce Mayor John McNichol has fond memories of Arkansas Supreme Court Justice Robin Wynn. The type of fellow you want to be around. I mean, he was really nice. You could go over his house and talk to him. Both growing up in the small town of Fordyce, that's where Robin and his brother Tom started their law firm. Now it's Tom's office as the district judge. I just got off the phone with Tom earlier and he said it's going to be tough, but uh, they all seem to be doing pretty good. Justice Wynn died Wednesday. He has been battling leukemia. Before serving on the Arkansas Supreme Court, he was the Dallas County District Judge and served on the Arkansas Court of Appeals. It's sad to hear uh, that, that the justice has passed. Now Governor Sanders will appoint someone to fill Justice Wynn's seat. That person will serve in that position until the next general election where voters will decide the next Supreme Court justice. But this could shake things up for the court as big rulings are expected soon. It seems highly likely that the governor will appoint a conservative uh, for that interim spot. Uh, and so this does really have the chance to change the dynamics of the Supreme Court. In Fordyce, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. Well, statements and testimonials rolled in throughout the day Thursday, including from Governor Sarah Sanders, who applauded Wynn's choice to go into law. We're still waiting for an announcement on funeral arrangements. Over in Nashville, a legislative office building was locked down after several Republican lawmakers received threatening letters containing a white powder. No one was hurt and the FBI, FBI is investigating. Now this comes less than after a week, more than 100 elected officials in Kansas received similar threatening letters. And the search is over for that Ocean Gates uh, for Ocean Gate's submersible that went missing near the Titanic. Officials say a catastrophic event destroyed the craft near the wreck of the Titanic. Roxana Saberi has been following the search from Boston throughout the week. There was a catastrophic event. The international rescue effort now turns to recovery. The debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. After crews found five major pieces of debris from Ocean Gate's Titan submersible, about 1,600 feet from the Titanic shipwreck Thursday. This is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there. A naval official told CBS News the Navy detected a noise consistent with an implosion shortly after the Titan first lost contact on Sunday, and that the banging sounds a Canadian aircraft had detected on Tuesday and Wednesday were actually from other ships in the area. Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. I think that's pretty clear. I wish I had been more vocal about that, but I think I was unaware that they weren't certified uh, because I wasn't really studying it. James Cameron, director of the movie Titanic and an underwater explorer, has made more than 30 dives to the wreckage site. It's not lost on me as, as somebody who studied the, the meaning of Titanic, that it's about warnings that were ignored. That ship's lying at the bottom of the ocean, not because of the nature of its steel or the nature of its compartments, but just because of bad seamanship. The captain was warned. There were icebergs ahead. It was a moonless night, and he plowed ahead. All five people on board the Titan are presumed dead. It's unclear if their bodies will ever be recovered. In a statement, Ocean Gate said it is grieving deeply over this loss. The Coast Guard said while it will continue to investigate the event, it's now starting to demobilize some of the search effort. Roxana Saberi, CBS News, Boston. Well, turning our attention now to what was a big night for Hog Nation, but especially a few young men. Three Arkansas Razorbacks taken last night into the NBA draft. The Orlando Magic took Anthony Black with the sixth pick. Later in the night, Sylvan Hills and North Little Rock star Nick Smith Jr. got taken by the Charlotte Hornets with the 27th pick. Here's what he had to say right after that. 19 years of hard work. Um, with everything I've been through, um, you know, still going through stuff to this day. Um, it's paying off. 
Well, to put the icing on the cake, Jordan Walsh taken in the second round by the Celtics and the three Razorbacks drafted were the most since 1992. And shortly after the draft ended, it was announced that a fourth Razorback, that's Ricky Council, he's signing with the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, we're expecting it to heat up this weekend when we come back, how to keep your pets safe if you're planning to take a trip to the lake to help survive the temperatures. Speaking of temperatures, what type of heat are we dealing with this Friday, Scott? We, we are talking about some warm temperatures, not just today, but it gets even warmer heading into the weekend. Triple digit heat index values, dangerously hot parts of the weekend. We'll take a look at the latest on that. Those weekend rain chances, which could hamper some of your plans, as well as what's to come next week. It's all coming up when THB 11 News at Noon returns.